hydrometer analysis. So this is the second part for the mechanical analysis of soil. First is the shim analysis, which is now used for soil particles that are greater than number 200 shiv or 0 0.075 millimeters, which are sands and gravels. For silts and clays, those soil particles passing number 200 shiv will now be analyzed using the hydrometer analysis. This hydrometer analysis is the same, the objective of this is the same as that of the shiv analysis, that is now to plot now the uh, particle size distribution curve. This hydrometer analysis is based on the principle of sedimentation of soil grains in water. It means that uh, the bigger the particles, the faster that it will now settle in water. And vice versa, the smaller the soil particles, then it takes time for it to settle in water. So when a soil is when the soil specimen is dispersed in water, then these particles settle at different velocities depending on their shape, size, weight, and the viscosity of water. So these are now the factors that will now affect the velocity. That is now the velocity of fall. In conducting now the hydrometer analysis, we need now, this is now a simple experiment, but we need now what you call as a hydrometer. So this is now the hydrometer. Uh, this is uh, just a small one. Exactly, it will now be placed inside a graduated cylinder. There are some marks here at the uh, hydrometer stem, uh, mark at 0 up to 60. But at the 0 one, there are some negative uh, graduations here above zero, say negative one, negative two, negative three, up to negative, uh, I believe, five. Then going down will now be positive zero up to positive 60. So what you will do here is just prepare now a water inside a graduated cylinder, prepare your hydrometer, then mix now thoroughly now the soil particles passing number 200 sheep inside the water. You have to mix it thoroughly. Sometimes we need some agents to be able now to break now the bigger particles into small particles that are sticking together. So it should be mixed thoroughly. After mixing thoroughly, then place now this hydrometer inside this solution and this hydrometer will just fall down at a certain time interval. Slowly and slowly till now falling down. Then you just read now the hydrometer reading here from 0 to 60 as the hydrometer is going down with respect to time. So your raw data will now be a certain time, say point, point 0.5 uh, minutes, that is now 30 seconds, after uh, one minute, after two minutes, and so on. Zero minute will now be the time when you will now insert this hydrometer inside the solution. So it takes the experiment, it takes some time, for example, it takes now two hours, three hours, four hours, depending, okay? Example that this will now, um, the, the reading now will now be almost zero at, at two hours, then you can just stop at two hours. But sometimes the reading after two hours is just around, say, 30 or 25, then you need more time to, for the experiment, three hours, four hours. Okay, so uh, that is now the simple way on conducting now the experiment for the hydrometer analysis. So again, the raw data will now be the time and the reading. And the reading, that is now the raw data. But again, in plotting now the particle size distribution curve, we need now the diameter and the percent finer. Percent finer. But this will now be calculated at this time intervals. What will now be the diameter of the soil particles at time 0.5 and the corresponding percent finer? at these different time readings, time readings. Now in the calculations now of this diameter and the percent final will now be using the, it will now be based from what we call as the Stokes law. As we have said while ago, that the velocity of fall that is now based on Stokes law will now be dependent on these different parameters. So by Stokes law, this is now the formula. But we will not be using now this formula, but rather there are some uh, solutions formulas, calculations that we'll be using instead of this. But our, sol our solutions, our calculations will still be based from this formula. 
by this formula. V will now be the velocity of fall, rho will now be the density of soil particles, density of water, uh, viscosity of water, and the diameter of soil particles. Solving now the diameter of the soil particles from this, then this will now be the empirical calculation of the diameter, particle diameter D in millimeters, in millimeters, which will now be equals to k the square root of L all over T, all over T. Let's take first k. This is now a certain parameter value, variable k, which will now be dependent on the specific gravity and the temperature of water. That means that uh, the soil that you will be using, the G sub S or the specific gravity should be known. There are some experiments uh, example, in your uh, testing of materials, there is a specific experiment in determining now the specific gravities of, of any material. So, uh, knowing now the specific gravity of the soil and the temperature during the test, that means that you take now the temperature of the water during the test. The test. So, from here, these are now the values of K. Example, at 2.65, the G sub S is 2.65, and the temperature of the water will now be, say, 20 degrees, then correspondingly, your value of k will be this value. L will now be the what you call as the length. Will now be the length of the water up to the up, up to this uh, up to the reading. I mean, okay. So this is not dependent on the reading hydrometer reading. So using now this table, this is now the value of L uh, that will now be dependent on the hydrometer reading. But take note that this hydrometer reading should be corrected in terms of mini schools. From your hydraulics, due to the adhesion of, of solids and the surf, I mean the, the liquid and the surface, there is some what we call now as variation of the actual water surface to that of the reading. So something like this. If you try to read now with your and look at the eye at the graduated cylinder, what you're seeing is this value here at the, at the upper portion. But the correct, supposedly correct water level will not be somewhere here. Will not be somewhere here. So uh, it should be correct. That's example, uh, since the readings now here will now be 0 at the top and 60 at the bottom, it will always be going down. So example, that your actual reading will now be, say, say 30, and the meniscus reading will now be, say, 1, then it should be, say, 30 plus 1 will now be 31, 31. So you need to correct now this reading with respect to meniscus, and that will now be used at this, at this table. So this should be corrected in terms of meniscus, and you get now the value of L. Of course, T will now be the time of reading. Use now this formula, and you get now the particle diameter. In calculating now the second uh, a requirement that is now the percent finer. The percent finer will now be calculated by this formula R sub C A all over W sub S times 100 percent to express it in percent. R sub C will now be the corrected reading. Corrected reading. And this corrected reading will now be the actual reading. Take note that this is now the actual and not the meniscus correction and so on. This is now the actual. Minus what we call as the zero correction plus the temperature correction factor, C sub T, C sub T. So uh, the zero correction, this is now uh, part of the, of the uh, test, because prior to the test, actual test, then you have to determine now the zero correction, which is now dependent on the, on the impurities of water present in your, in your water sample. For a pure water, completely pure water, the zero correction should be zero. But we will be using a water coming from the top, coming from the faucet. So that means that there are impurities. And you have to check now that one prior to the test. By putting now the hydrometer, so we're going back to the previous slide. If you put now this hydrometer here at a pure water, the hydrometer will now have its reading equals to zero. That is now what we call as a pure water. But if this water contains some impurities, impurities, then there will be what we call as a certain reading if you put now this hydrometer. It may be positive 1, positive 2, or negative 1, negative 2, dependent on the impurities. 
so uh, without any soil particle here pure water i mean water coming from the top coming from the faucet place down hydrometer read now and that will now be your what we call as zero correction and you record now your zero correction then the c sub t will now be the correction factor for temperature coming from here since you have now what we call as the temperature during the test get now the value of c sub t from this table and that will now be your c sub t you see now this formula you got now the corrected reading r sub c a will now be what we call as a certain factor that is not dependent on the unit weight of soil solids the unit weight of soil solids in g sub uh, grams per cc grams per cubic centimeter uh, since the the uh, unit weight of water will now be just one grams per cc it follows that numerically the unit weight of the soil solids is just the same numerically with the specific gravity specific gravity so example 2.65 then your correction will now be 1.0 so just place it here and of course w sub s will now be the weight of soil solids you just weigh that one prior to the test that is now the weight total weight of your soil sample and place it here use now this formula and you get now the percent finer percent finer so that's it okay so what the diameter and percent finer with respect to time intervals or time readings and you can now plot the particle size distribution curve the particle diameter and the percent finer the same as that of the SHIB analysis, it will now be plotted using the semi logarithmic plot. Take note that what is not the importance of this um, hydrometer analysis? Sometimes in SHIB analysis, your, your percent passing number 200 is, say, is somewhat high, 50%, 60%. In that case, you cannot be able to determine now the, uh, the D30 and the D10 using the SHIB analysis results. And in that case, take now that portion passing now number 200 and analyze it using the uh, hydrometer analysis and you continue now the plot. Example that here, the portion passing number 200 using now the SHIB analysis is just say, uh, let's just say 60%. If you plot now this, uh, this plot using the SHIB analysis, you cannot be able to determine the D30, 30% and the 10% diameters. I mean, corresponding to 10% and 30%. So you continue now the plot here. This is now the SHIB analysis, I mean hydrometer analysis. And from here, you can be able to determine now the corresponding diameters for 10%, 25%, 30%. So uh, this is now a complete plot of the particle size distribution curve for, for SHIB analysis and the hydrometer analysis. But again, our concern on this discussion is this part here, the hydrometer analysis. As an application problem for hydrometer analysis, analysis, let's take this one. Below is the result of a hydrometer analysis conducted in the laboratory. So from this table, this is now the raw data. That is now the time of reading and the hydrometer, actual hydrometer reading without any correction. So time 0.25 minutes, this will now be all in minutes. So that means 20.25 minutes means something like 15 seconds. The reading is now 51. At 0.5 minutes, that is now 30 seconds, 48, 1 minute, 2 minutes, and so on, 60 minutes, that will now be 1 hour, 2 hours, 4 hours, and so on. Additional data for this problem will now be the specific gravity of the soil solids will now be 2.75. The weight of soil solids is 50 grams. Minuscule correction is 1.0. Zero correction, as we have discussed a while ago, that is when you have now that water place in the graduated cylinder place now the hydrometer the reading there is plus 7.0 temperature during the test is 28 degrees what is required here is to plot now the particle size distribution curve in solution to that problem i'll be making use of excel but uh, you can still make use of uh, manual calculations or you can use Excel. The data given from the problem are marked in light green, this one, the time of the reading and the actual hydrometer reading. 
the additional data as given from the problem are also marked here mark green the G sub best that is now the specific gravity 2.75 the weight of the soil solids 50 grams minutes correction 1.0 zero correction 7.0 and the temperature during the test is 28 degrees celsius again what we need will now be the diameter and the percent finer as we have discussed that the diameter from here is equals to k the square root of l all over t all over t so let's take first k first k we introduce now this table in determining now the value of k given the problem that the specific rabbit of the soil solids will now be 2.75 and the temperature during the test is 28 degrees then therefore the value of k from this table is obtained to be 0 0.01208 so that means i'll just place it here the k now is 0 0.01 208 based from that table next will now be l next will now be l l will now be based from the uh, corrected for mini schools corrected for mini schools so we need now to correct first the actual reading by means of the mini schools correction given from the problem that the mini schools correction is one so that means that if your actual reading will now be 51 then your corresponding corrected reading for meniscus will now be 52 plus 1 then so on okay because of this okay meniscus correction it will always be plus so uh, 48 then 49 and so on so that means this part here this column will now show us about the correct uh, corrected reading for meniscus then based from this corrected reading for meniscus we determine now l from this table here from this table this is now the uh, this should be not not the actual but this will now be the corrected for meniscus corrected for meniscus reading yeah so what corrected meniscus for reading then this is now the corresponding l that means that example 52 the corrected the reading is 52 what is now the corresponding l from this table 52 52 then that is now 7.8 so that's why here the correct uh, the, the l will now be 7.8 base from 52 base from 52 and so on you do the same for the other parts of the reading time uh, interval i should say using now the same table so 49 corresponds now to 8.3 and so on and so forth next will now be d because t in minutes this will now be the readings I mean these are now the time time of reading so corresponding the example for this this is now being calculated as k which is now 0 0.0128 this multiplied by the square root of l which is now 7.8 divided by 0.25 then that is now the diameter d you do the same for the other time interval so the same okay k will now be constant to be 0 0.01208 the square root of 8.3 divided by 0.5 and so on so these are now the diameters okay so after now the diameter we calculate now the percent finer but prior to that as we have discussed in our discussion the percent finer is r sub c a all over w sub s multiplied by 100 percent we need now the corrected corrected hydrometer reading r sub c and by formula r sub c is the actual reading minus the zero correction plus c sub t the actual reading is r this actual okay see 51 48 47 and so on zero correction let's try to see okay given from the problem that the zero zero correction is seven so given nayan next will now be c sub t that is not the correction due to temperature and from this table here since the the uh, temperature during the test is 28 degrees that will be 28 degrees then your c sub t will now be 2.5 so your temperature correction c sub t will now be 25 so we'll mark it here 25 
So from here, we have now the zero correction, we have now the C sub T, we have now the actual reading. Then we can now calculate the R sub C corrected hydrometer reading R sub C. So that means that this will now be taken as the actual, which is now 51, minus the zero correction of 7, plus the C sub T of 2.5, we got it to be 46.5. And on the next time reading, this is taken as the actual of 48, minus the zero correction of 7, plus 2.5, that is now the temperature correction, we got now to be 43. That will now be the same throughout the other time readings. And finally, the percent finer will now be calculated as R sub C A all over W sub S times 100%. So, meron na tayong R sub C dito, R sub C, then A will now be a factor that is now dependent on the unit weight of sol solids taken from this table as we have uh, noted in our discussion that this is numerically equal to the g sub s since the unit weight of water is one gram per cc given that the g sub s is 2.75 then this corresponds now to a unit weight of the sol solids equals to 2.75 grams per cc that corresponds now to a correction factor a equals to 0.98 so we'll mark it here. This is now 0.98, the correction factor A. Given from the problem that the weight of the soil solids being tested is 50 grams. 50 grams. So using now this formula to calculate now for the corresponding percent finer, this will now be calculated as R sub C, which is 46.5, times A, which is 0.98, divided by the W sub S, 50 grams, express it in percent by multiplying it with 100 and you got this to be 91.14 percent these other values will just be calculated in the same manner 85 83 and so on in, in plotting now the particle size distribution curve we need now the diameter so i'll just uh, mark this one so we need that diameter that is now the horizontal axis plotted in a logarithmic scale and the vertical axis will now be the percent finer plotted in arithmetic scale so i've already plotted this one so diameter this one percent finer this will now be corresponding to one point another point will be this diameter and the percent finer and the corresponding plot for that is shown here is shown here this is the first uh, diameter and percent finer pair for the first reading 0.25 minutes or 15 seconds second reading third reading and so on so this is now the particle size distribution curve